Hello, it's good to see you back for more. Now this might sound quite familiar, particularly if you have recently studied the fiction session. Today, instead of fiction, we're going to be looking at non-fiction and how you can find information in this type of text. Some key points for you here. So in English language, you will need to write about non-fiction text. Now, this could be something modern, and contemporary, such as a speech or a leaflet, or it might be something much older, perhaps something from the 1800s, when Charles Dickens was writing, for example. Now, just to remind you, non-fiction means it's true. It's often fact-based, such as text we come across in our everyday lives. The skills you'll be asked to demonstrate will be very similar to what you're asked to do with fiction texts. You might have to look for key points from the text, worth a few marks, or maybe something much more specific, worth a lot more marks. Now let's think about how you might approach a non-fiction text that you're given. You could look at the questions first and work out what you're being asked to do. You might focus on different parts of the text for different questions. For example, a question might say, Read the first paragraph, lines one to six, and answer question one. In which case, just focus on lines one to six at this stage for this question. I've talked about different skills before, such as skimming and scanning, and also implicit and explicit information. These are also relevant for non-fiction texts, not just fiction. But you'll also need to consider some other things, such as the form. What type of text are you writing about? Is it a letter, a leaflet, a speech, for example? What about the language? Is it formal? Is it informal? And this links really closely to the audience. Who is your text aimed at? And finally, purpose. Why has your text been written? Is it to inform, to explain, to persuade, to argue? So let's move on to have a look at how these work in practice. Families come in all shapes and sizes and they all have different likes and enjoy spending their holidays in different ways. However, they do all want to have the best time ever with the most fun possible. If you are visiting a new country like Scotland, there's always lots to do for all ages, so why take a coach tour? I believe that even if you just take one day to explore the country by coach, you'll love it for these reasons. Five reasons why children love a day trip in Scotland by coach. Number one, Scottish tour guides are full of fun, especially those at the Harry Coo. They're much more fun than parents. They will keep everybody entertained all day with their stories, songs and jokes. Two, on a coach tour, there will be lots of stops throughout the day so you can get out and stretch your legs and run to the toilet if you need it. The Hairy Coo in Edinburgh tries to stop at least every 40 minutes on their Scotland tours so that you don't get bored sitting on the bus. Three, you can get a selfie with a Hairy Coo or a Highland Coo, a real highlight for all the animal lovers on board. Four, on the Hairy Coo's Loch Ness day trip, you can also take a boat trip on Loch Ness to try and spot Nessie, the Loch Ness monster. And five, children love learning about Scotland's history when tour guides tell them about Scotland's gory and fascinating past. Okay, so let's consider a few ideas about this non-fiction text. If you skim through it, you'll get a pretty good idea of what it's going to be about, that is, the benefits of going on a coach trip in Scotland. If I asked you to scan the text and find the name of a company who conducts the tours, you would look for names or brands, probably starting with capital letters, and yeah, you got it, the Hairy Coo. Sounds good, right? Now, this is a non-fiction text, so it's written with audience and purpose in mind. Let's have a look at the flap of this text. Well, the form, it's probably from a tourist brochure or holiday brochure, the language is fairly informal and accessible, it's aimed at young people, and the triplet, stories, songs and jokes, is evidence of this. Audience, it is clear that this is aimed at children. You can get a selfie with the hairy coo, shows this. And purpose, 
It's informing, but it's also persuading as well. Okay, so you've got a good idea about the type of things you might be asked to look at in a non-fiction text. So let's look at one that's a little older, from 1872. The introduction of the railway system tended greatly to facilitate the desire for possession of town and country house, and in this day we have, in all our large cities and towns, men who are leaving their chambers, their offices, their consulting rooms every evening in great haste that they may arrive at the train or other conveyance that will take them a journey of some five miles to their homes. Again, every morning the same men, usually in very great haste, leave their homes to return to business. Now, having listened to this extract about railways, identify one true point from the text. People who used trains in the 1800s preferred to live in the city. The approximate distance from railway stations to homes is five miles. Or men were reluctant to leave their homes to travel by railway. OK, so you have hopefully had time to think about this. And the one that is true is the second one, as it says in the text take them a journey of some five miles to their homes. Now another type of question might be something like, what do you learn about railways and train travel in this extract? You should be thinking about things like, railways have helped people to live more flexible lives between town and country, trains made travelling more convenient and men were keen to use them to get to and from work. Now, session five will continue looking at non-fiction texts, but this time the focus will be on summarising and synthesising. Here's a quick visual reminder to check your understanding of flap. Form, the type of text, the form it's written in. Language, is it chatty and informal or more formal and specific? Audience, who is the text aimed at? The age, the gender, the level of interest and so on, and the purpose. Why was it written? Is it seeking to give you information, to persuade, to explain, to argue, or maybe something different?